Hello, everybody. Welcome back to week 18 of Shift Tracking the Local Real Estate Market. I'm a little excited today. I mean, after a couple of weeks of what we're just, I don't want to call the market lazy or anything like that, but we just had this kind of steady, some things were just kind of hovering, we were talking about consistency, and all that's great. Um, but we have some, we have five, five record settings, categories this week. So the, the five categories, and we're going to kind of just go over these briefly here. Um, new listings, 328, the highest that it has been since the start of the year. Now, it's not all that surprising. We are coming into the spring market. We are coming into what should be uh, the highest listing period of the year. So while it's not all that unexpected in terms of the cyclicality of normal real estate years for the case of uh, our purposes this year, and with interest rates even getting a little bump up just recently, uh, not the most expected, but very happy to see it. I mean, we have been dying to see new listings increasing. We have been waiting for that all year. So the fact that we finally went to 328 after 284, 261, and 253 the couple weeks before, I am pumped about that one. The next category on here that it's at, at its absolute highest and by kind of a landslide is closed units. 402 closed units just in this past week alone. That is by far one of the highest that we've had. I mean, if I even scroll back, we had a 360, a 313, and then earlier in the year, I mean, we had a 198 one week, that, that third week of the year. So the fact that we're all the way up here at three, or excuse me, at 402, I am uh, very happy to see some of the closed numbers. And that means it's it's a really good recycling of some of that inventory that was on the market, was hovering, hovering, and we can just get it out and get it behind us and we're moving forward with fresh buyers and fresh homes. So that's great. Now, the, he, that's really great to see in terms of quantity of homes, available options and everything like this. However, on a, you know, again, a record setting side, but maybe not the most favorable to the buyer population, but what might be favorable to the seller population is that we do have our average days on market and our median days on market are both the lowest that they've been all year. Only 63 for the average and only 22 median days on market. I mean, if we keep going back, we were in the 50s earlier in, in the beginning of the year. Then we kind of got into the 20s in that March and April. And we kind of hovered around, you know, 28, 29, 24, 25, 26. We're all the way down at 22 now. I'm sorry, I didn't scroll all the way across the screen here. So both that low. And what does that mean, right? Well, as a buyer, it's our 72 hour rule, right? And you ask, well, what is a 72 hour rule as a buyer? You got to know about it. And that's what we use our search for. You got to see it. And that's why I do 200, 250 virtual tours. It's incredible to say that. I just checked the number against my YouTube. 250 virtual tours in just basically the past two years. And then we have to offer on it. Now, one of the things that's really nice about New Jersey, and this is just a little bit of education inside of this. Remember, in New Jersey, an offer is not binding. And what does that mean for you? I mean, okay, great. I make an offer and it's not necessarily binding. Okay, what does that really mean? Well, what it means is that the concept of putting a site unseen offer actually doesn't really have a lot of risk associated with it. Because let's say a home comes up on Monday. And let's say you're not really able to get out and see that place until Thursday. Well, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that's kind of the 72 hour rule. And we use that rule because you really got to get your offer in in that first 72 hours or else the chance that you're even going to be able to offer it drops dramatically. So that's why we say three day rule. Most listings end up going four day, five day, six days, but some, some, some want to call that highest and best on that third day or fourth day. You're sitting here like, I got to put an offer in because the deadline's Thursday at noon, but I can't even see the house until Thursday at 530 after I get off of work. How am I, how am I supposed to put an offer in if I can't even see the house? Well. Imagine you saw it. We use the video and we use the pictures, which get about 90% of the idea of the house. We put your offer in. What if you even win your bid by 3 p.m. and then you go and see it at 5.30 p.m. that night? What if you decide you don't like it? I type an email to the agent and say, hey, I'm really sorry. The buyer is going to go a different direction. And that's it. There's no penalty. You haven't paid an escrow at this point. There's no legal ramifications. So the ability to do that is there. Now, I'm not saying that's ideal. I'm definitely not saying that's ideal. Obviously, I would love if every single buyer on every single house had five hours to go through that house and look at it. But the timing just doesn't allow for that. So we have to be strategic and we have to be creative in the ways that we can actually get that stuff done. Okay. Here's the one. Oh, 
it's making me it's making me happy because this is what I had predicted earlier this year and it's finally bearing itself out. We always talk basic econ, basic econ. Look who came to the party. And it's and let me just I'll just add our little formatting here and you know take them over here. Median list price three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Last week it was in the 320, 319, 320, 319, 320, and all the way back it was a little bit lower, 3015, 309 earlier in January, 312, 314 through February, 314 coming up to 320 in March. I feel like I'm one of those uh, auction bidders, <laughs> but now we're here at $325,000. So our, our basic two graphs, and, and I didn't, you know, I, I don't have to go crazy with these graphs that we're doing here, right? So for these graphs, right, our new listings, you can see week one, week two, all the way up. We just hit our highest in terms of new listings, so we're getting a lot more homes are coming on the market, so you have more options. And then just reducing that and moving it to the side and just pulling up our median list price one. And you can just see, I'll move that back in a second. Oh, you know what, since I moved it, sorry guys, I am uh, breaking, I'm breaking the, I'm breaking the model here. Hold on. Let's see if we can put it back in real time. There we go. It's using my formula, so it didn't like it. There we go. Back to, back to normal. So you can see our median list price now is the highest that it has been all year, 325,000 here in week 18. Uh, do I see this trend reversing at all? Nope. Nope. I think 325 is here to stay. I don't think we're going to stay up here at 325. I think we'll probably come down. We might even bump back between 322, you know, 323, somewhere in there. We might kind of just have a little correction. But I think the overall trend line is is kind of here to stay. Again, you know, you may be, and, and let's just kind of let's just kind of zoom these back out, and you know, we'll just bring us a little more front and center. So again, you may be hearing a lot of conversation on national media about what's going on with prices and things like that. Remember, they're taking in those national algorithms. The West Coast is not going through the same thing that the East Coast is, and then specifically around Philadelphia. You know, Philadelphia was ranked one of the top. 10 cities for Gen Z to move to, right? Culturally diverse, a little bit of tech that's starting to enter in, great food scene, historic city, easy travel, routes and locations to New York and the Baltimores and the beaches and the, and the mountains. So we're starting to get, and again, Philadelphia has also had its little bit of safety concerns with Center City and things like that, and people just getting frustrated with the Maniunks and the Roxboroughs and some of these different areas in terms of getting getting to and from places. It can be very isolating. Flat South Jersey, while yes, it may have a little higher taxes, remember you're getting that back in infrastructure, schools, hospitals. Those taxes aren't going to nothing, right? It's, it's, it's a reason that places in South Jersey are coveted areas to live because of all the amenities they have for them. So anyway, that's going to do it for us here, uh, week 18, start of May, start of the real spring season. I'm hoping that we're going to have a really nice, strong uh, rest of May. I'm hoping we're going to have a strong June. I would probably even say going into July, we're going to have that. Um, let's keep an eye on interest rates. They even bumped up, interest rates bumped up a little bit and our prices even still bumped up. Now let's see what that interest rate thing, that conversation does to the prices going over the next course of May, which is why I think we might have a little bit of a price correction, 322, 323, somewhere in there. We'll, we'll see what that comes out to be. But uh, really, I mean, options as a buyer are getting a lot stronger, but the days on market and the price point for seller is really great. So right now, this is sort of a make hay time. Both buyers and sellers are really enjoying getting in and out of contracts at the moment uh, pretty quickly. So anyway, that's gonna do it for us here on this week. And I'm just trying to find my button. Have a great week and we'll talk to you soon.